project manager for GVF, and uh, welcome, Shane. You may start at any time you wish. Thank you for the opportunity to address you today. As you said, my name is Shane Trimble. I'm the project manager with the Greater Valley Forge Transportation Management Association, more commonly known as GVF. We were formed in 1990, and we've been advocating for improved mobility for the transportation infrastructure and investment for the past 20 years. We're a membership organization, and we represent over 100 partners in both public and private sectors. Our service area covers both northern Chester County and southern Montgomery County. As a membership organization supported in part by the Department of Transportation and through public uh, private membership dues, GPF is a working public-private partnership. Although the talk of public-private partnerships typically involves large infrastructure projects costing hundreds of millions of dollars. Public-private partnerships can be as small as an organization such as mine that provides a voice for a region's transportation needs. During the past 20 years, GBF has been able to leverage private funding for the benefit of the public during many large infrastructure improvement projects. We have sec successfully managed public information campaigns for the PA309 improvement project, the US 202 improvement projects, and the US 422 improvement projects. Along with public information campaigns, we operate commuter shuttles for many large employers along the US 2 corridor to alleviate congestion that's experienced during construction. Public information and commuter shuttles are excellent programs during a construction project. However, the strength of GBS is in our multi jurisdictional public private coalitions. Our coalitions cooperatively work cooperatively to advocate for transportation improvements that have a significant regional impact. GBF recognized years ago that a region that advocates with one voice is more successful at funding regional projects. Our US 422 Corridor Coalition has been successful in obtaining federal appropriations totaling over $20 million for the US 422 Schuylkill River Bridge at Valley Ford Reconstruction. This is a four-lane concrete bridge that carries the same daily traffic as the Ben Franklin Bridge in Philadelphia. The strategy has worked. However, in recent years, available funds for projects have been declining while the costs have been increasing. In the case of the Schuylkill River Bridge, federal appropriations have barely met 20% of the final project cost. We have seen project on this project progress on this project and many others grind to a halt as public funding has become limited. We know that a region's economy can only continue to grow if the infrastructure can support it. We also know that our region's infrastructure is not meeting current demands and will not continue to support growth. The inadequacy of our infrastructure is not limited to transit, highways, and bridges. It's in all three. Without significant investment in the backbone of our region's economy, the growth of Greater Philadelphia will be surpassed by regions elsewhere that are making the investment. This sobering fact has been expressed by a number of our partners, many of which operate internationally and throughout the country. Prior to the economic collapse of 2008, areas in the southeastern United States, such as Atlanta, Charlotte, Raleigh, and Washington, D.C., in regions in the southwest, such as Dallas, Phoenix, and Las Vegas, were investing billions into their infrastructure, infrastructure and benefiting from the relocation of industry to those regions. The New York metropolitan area estimates that they need over $500 billion to improve their infrastructure. That's the bridges, the tunnels, and the transit. Internationally, China is investing over $500 billion in its infrastructure, and India is investing similar amounts. We are being surpassed internationally with investments in infrastructure. The only way Pennsylvania can compete is to leverage private capital. The funding will not come from the federal government. Recognizing the absolute importance that infrastructure has on the economy and the limited ability for the Department of Transportation keep up with the demand for improvement, it is time for Pennsylvania to take a progressive step in controlling our destiny. <coughs> Legislation such as House Bill 1510 and Senate Bill 693 will allow for private capital investment in the infrastructure that private industry needs to grow. 
while improving the quality of life for the region's <laughs> residents and employees. To be effective, however, the centralization of a region's capital should not be permitted. A region that decides to take control of its roads should reap the full benefit of their contributions. Collecting user fees can only be thought of as local money for local projects and not a method to close state budget gaps. Recently, the discussion in this region has been to toll 422 as a method to raise funds for the infrastructure improvements to the highway and also to restore regional rail. The list of projects vital to the, to the corridor is not a very long list, however, it is not a cheap list either. The Schuylkill River Bridge at Valley Forge is estimated to cost $135 million to replace. Reconstructing US 422 around Pottstown is estimated to be about $300 million to, for that project. Adding capacity to US 422 from 202 to PA 309 is estimated to be $300 million. And lastly, but certainly not least, is restoring passenger rail from Norristown to Reading and Wyomissing, and that estimate at the lowest end is $500 million. The total is over a billion dollars, and that money is not available. Public funding, which has historically been the model used for these kinds of projects, is derived from taxes collected from motor vehicle fuels. Both the federal government and the state government collect these gas taxes. However, this is a slippery slope. Fuel efficiency standards are being raised and people are driving less, which means more, less money is being, being collected by fewer people. At the federal level, in the past 18 months, the Federal Highway Trust Fund, the fund where all those fuel taxes go to, has bankrupted twice and required emergency action by the federal government to shore it up. But it's not only declining fuel taxes that are affecting our area and, are, and diminishing our buying power, it's the cost of materials. Since 2003, the cost of construction materials, asphalt, concrete, and steel, have raised by 43%. So it is nothing short of a crisis to say that we have no money and we have raising costs and an increased need. Given today's public funding climate, the projects in 422 are nothing but short of that pipe dream. Utilizing private capital is the only way to guarantee funding for the needed improvements. US 422 has been identified as an emerging growth corridor for the greater Philadelphia region. It is home to many high-wage technology firms, pharmaceutical firms, and financial firms. According to recent projections done by the Delaware Valley Regional <coughs> Planning Commission, the corridor population is expected to grow between 20 and 25 percent by year 2030 and add 28,000 jobs to this region. The corridor is also expected to add 21,000 new housing units. With all this growth going to <clears throat> result in additional traffic congestion, current commuters routinely experience 15 mile backups on US 422, and it takes 45 minutes to go a distance that should only take 15. It's difficult to imagine what that would be like with an extra 28,000 commuters on those roads. Without significant infrastructure investment, the corridor will not be able to contain, can support this kind of desired growth. However, if user fees collected on US 422 must first go to Harrisburg before coming back to the region, the corridor will not support any tolling effort. The corridor cannot afford to do nothing. In conclusion, it has been the spirit of independence that's been paramount throughout the history of Pennsylvania. It is now time to take bold steps to provide for our future. Passing enabling legislation that allows for public-private partnerships will be the cornerstone of the state's new economy. And I'm happy to take any questions. Any questions? <clears throat>